For a sport that has a collective market value of over $70 billion, the game of baseball has some rather humble beginnings. Despite having the vaguest of origins being riddled with myths, here and there, one name that undoubtedly deserves credit for the modern game is Doc Adams. But to know about Doc Adams, we need to know about baseball itself and where it came from. The game of baseball can be likened to an orphan boy who never knew his parents, but grew up to be a superstar. Only those responsible for his nourishment and upbringing can take credit, but you can imagine the many people who would try to steal the glory of being responsible for the beautiful modern game we know, all at the expense of the real game changers. Baseball never started off as exactly baseball. The game we know and love is a product of the collective evolution of ball and bat games, with origins dating as far back as 500 BC and Greece. There were representations of a sport that uses a stick and a ball, but no one's really sure if that was hockey or baseball exactly. But modern baseball puts the 18th century as its origin, especially in the US. In the United States, baseball was far from a competitive sport. In fact, it wasn't officially known as baseball. It was just a bat and ball sport that merchants, lawyers, clerks, and workers who were done with work by 3 p.m played for friendly association and physical fitness. Different variations of the game existed in different cities, each with their own name and rules. John Smith, a student at Princeton, wrote in his diary, a fine day, play baseball on the campus, but am beaten for a miss, both catching and striking the ball. In Pennsylvania and other southern states, it was known as town ball, round ball in England, gold ball, and other names in other places. But with the help of written down rules, the New York variant of the sport managed to gain attention and recognition through the enthusiasm and love of the game by a particular team in New York, the New York Knickerbockers. On that team were prominent historical figures of the game, one of whom was Doc Adams. Born in Mount Vernon, New Hampshire on November 1st, 1814, Daniel Lucius Doc Adams was the fourth of five children of Daniel and Nancy Adams. He came from an affluent family. His father was a physician and author of books widely used in America, having attended Amherst College, but attaining his bachelor's degree from Yale, he furthered his studies at Harvard Medical School, where he got an MD. He got the nickname Doc, as he was an active participant in the assistance of cholera outbreaks in New York. His leisure time was spent playing what we know today as baseball. He was playing this sport as early as the 1830s most likely after his graduation from college. He was part of the New York Baseball Club, and when the Knickerbockers were formed, he was given an invitation to join. That invitation soon turned into a die-hard passion for Doc, who went on to be a pioneer of the game. Doc Adams, as a member and player of the New York Knickerbockers, is responsible for the creation of the shortstop position around 1850. At that time, fielding teams were at a huge disadvantage because excluding the three infielders who were standing at the bases, all players were outfielders. This left huge spaces in between bases for batters to exploit. To make matters worse, the distance between fielding players combined with the light weight of the ball made it hard for fielders to throw the ball between themselves. The solution? The creation of an infielder position to reduce the space between fielders, a shortstop. With the playing field leveled to an extent, it made the games more interesting. It seemed like Doc Adams wasn't made for baseball, but rather baseball was made for Doc Adams. He played in every outfield position except for as a pitcher, and his left-handed swings were sending baseballs into the river by the Knickerbockers' playing field. Given the fact that Doc Adams was an excellent craftsman of baseball, I don't think his teammates were staying mad at him. Technology, especially in sports, was very limited. But that didn't stop Doc Adams from making improvements to baseball equipment. Adams handmade the baseballs his team used and most baseball clubs in and outside of New York. This went a long way in keeping the sport alive. His experience in the craft made him an expert and the best at it as he found new techniques that made the balls easy to throw and hit, improving the experience of the game. 
He didn't stop at baseballs. He oversaw the production of baseball bats as well. Truly, we owe Doc Adams a lot for his contribution to the sport. But why don't we hear his name the most when discussing who the pioneers of the modern game are? Due to the lack of documents and concrete evidence, it wasn't easy to get away with made-up stories and myths in the 19th century. When baseball gained prominence in the late 19th century and early 20th century, being credited as the father of baseball was an honor many people would lie their way to. One of them was war hero Abner Doubleday, a major general who fought for the Union during the American Civil War, now tagged as the Doubleday myth. He claimed that Abner Doubleday is the father of modern baseball was made by the Mills Commission, which was formed in 1905 and headed by the National League president at the time, Abraham G. Mills. The commission was set up to find out the origins of baseball. Abner Doubleday organized and played the first game of baseball in 1839 in his hometown of Cooperstown, New York which would be known as the birthplace of baseball and where the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum is situated. This is what the history books documented for a long time. But what was the real story? In 1947, the Knickerbockers held elections and Doc Adams emerged as president, having served as vice in the two years following. With the growth of baseball, the Washington Baseball Club and Eagles Baseball Club reached out to the Knickerbockers with the desire to have a unified set of rules. A committee was set up with respect to this idea, which Adams was a part of. Doc Adams wrote the Laws of Baseball, which would later be known as the Magna Carta of Baseball. It contained all the rules that had been deliberated and agreed on, such as games lasting for nine innings, teams comprising nine players, field dimensions, and so on. His days as a baseball executive ended in March of 1862, but even in his old age, when he couldn't play anymore, he remained a respectable figure in the baseball community, being called often the nester of ball players for his influence and wisdom in the game. With the foundation set firm, the first professional baseball team, the Cincinnati Red Stockings, was formed in 1869. And not long after both divisions of the major league came into existence, the American League in 1876 and the National League in 1901, with the first World Series taking place two years later. Sadly, Doc Adams never got to witness the World Series because he died due to pneumonia on the 3rd of January, 1899 in Connecticut. Along with his demise, his name slowly faded from the history books of baseball. All he did was done for the love of the game and not for personal gain or recognition. Even Alexander Cartwright, a fellow Knickerbocker who had left the club long before the formation of NABBPS, was formed, got more credit and accolades for codifying the game. Cartwright's Hall of Fame plaque has the title, the father of modern baseball on it. Giving him recognition for the rules, we all know Adams pioneered during his days as an executive. It was only a matter of time before the world knew who was truly responsible for the game we all know and love. Although the double day myth was debunked, there wasn't a definite and correct story for the origin of baseball, 1980. Almost a century after his death, Doc Adams' name would resurface again in a letter about him in New York, and Major League Baseball historian John Thorne would make publications about Doc Adams' life and works. Unlike Abner Doubleday, documents didn't have to be forged to credit Doc Adams' name. The Magna Carta of Baseball, handwritten by Adam himself, emerged in recent years, was auctioned in California for a whopping $3.26 million, making it the third highest price ever for any sports memorabilia. Also fighting for Doc Adams' recognition was his great-granddaughter, Marjorie Adams, who campaigned for her father to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. She got to know of her great-grandfather's deeds in an article in the Baseball Journal of Elijah Fields Quarterly, written by none other than John Thorne. Before her death, she made it her life's mission to see Doc Adams in the Baseball Hall of Fame, going as far as printing out cards to hand to strangers while striking up conversations with them. Yet, Doc has not been inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. But do you think it'll make any difference if Doc Adams is inducted when he was basically baseball itself? He was so in love with this sport, 
company not only formalized it, but made sure there was adequate equipment for the game to be played within and beyond his city. He's probably a man too big for any accolades as it is. But what do you think? Let us know. Nevertheless, it's only right that the history of the national pastime that is baseball is told correctly. And although the false origin of the game can't be completely erased, Doc Adams can rest easy knowing he is finally getting the recognition he deserves. If you enjoyed this video about the father of baseball, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.